Great. Recording. Yeah. Okay. So I stop my video. Yeah, yeah. We know how you look like. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share my screen, not my email. Um, actually, uh, we have uh, quite a few people on the call. Thank you all. Um, the, I have, I'm sharing at the moment uh, notes that I made and were actually not cleaned up after the previous hackathon TCOM that we had. Um, just to make sure that we don't uh, say the same things again. Um, and I mean, just quickly go through that so they're, they're not, you know, not formatted properly. Um, we said we would need extension cables and stuff like that, which I'm guessing uh, Edward and Vinny are taking care of. Uh, you've yeah. all heard that you will need to register at NPL. NPL? Uh, sorry, NPL. RAL. Been going to too many places. <laughs> um, there was a suggestion to have some kind of running. Uh, not blog because we don't have a space for a blog, but something anyway to um, make sure that people are aware of what's going on. We could do that via the Slack potentially or whatever, something like that, which uh, Eduardo and Evgeny were also going to take care of. Um, means we'll need to take some pictures occasionally. Um, then, uh, okay, this probably should be over here. Uh, we said we would start the day with um, making a GitHub, well, okay, have GitHub projects with Eduardo made already, I believe, on the different projects that we uh, want to tackle. And then in a group discussion, we would create the, the list of issues that we believe needs to be uh, resolved, small scale type of things. And then we would group people accordingly. And the idea is that during the day, we uh, kill off issue one by one in different groups. Um, ideally, if possible, some of those issues are independent such that people can work independently. But so there will be GitHub projects that Eduardo is going to show at the beginning how that works so that we can all say, okay, I've done this issue and I move the project on. Uh, we would uh, either explicitly label all the issues as far as novice expert or effort, or we would just discuss it. I mean, labeling issues in, I think it's useful if we're with more people, if we're just with a group, a small group, it's maybe not necessary, but the, uh, on the other hand, it's very easy to do as well. Uh, so that's sort of the, uh, well, so it would start with some, some planning on that and then. Uh, so the list of issues would be per group, say. So the create list of issues would be uh, a task that each group will do independently. Right. And well, and, and potentially people within the group, yes. Just, uh, I, I'll, I'll take an example. I want to implement algorithm one, another person wants to imp implement algorithm two, whatever, yes. Uh, something like that. Um, we have a, a discussion, we had a discussion on issues, things to tackle for the GE data, for instance, and, and Palak is making that list already. Um, I hope that makes sense to everybody. And then, um, okay, but I'll maybe move this one down a bit. Uh, this is maybe again on the practical side. Um, 
sorry, it's random order. I didn't manage to clean this up before and neither did anybody else. So. Uh, we, we thought we would just let people bring their own laptops um, and there would be two Linux desktops in the room if necessary, as far as I remember. Um, and maybe we get some monitors for easy working if that's possible. Yeah. And um, what we would be doing therefore, I mean, many people's laptops might not be able to cope with serious stuff. So uh, those who can log in remotely elsewhere, they can do that obviously. Uh, internet connection at RAL should be pretty good. And what we will also do is we, we will uh, start some uh, powerful machines on Azure. So then we'll take care of that with the latest uh, software installed. Uh, the we didn't discuss that one properly yet. So that's maybe something that we could do now. Uh, one of the issues, well, as far as I can see, there's two problems with that. Uh, one is that you don't necessarily have display capabilities there. You can SSH in if he sets it up, but then you need to do Windows X Windows redirection. And that means you need to have an X Windows client on your machine or we can maybe do something with VNC or whatever. Uh, it implies that people have that stuff in, installed on their laptop, which I don't know if everybody has that. Um, on the other hand, I was thinking if they need X Windows servers, they could run the virtual machine and run, use that and then to use that just as a portal to go to the uh, uh, Azure client. Does that sound enough? I don't what type of uh, output do you expect to need X windows? Well, you will need to be able to, many people will want to be able to plot results and so on, yes, and display an image and whatever. So, yeah. They, they will be running Python and making a plot of a... It could be done via Jupyter Notebooks for those familiar with it and, and who want to develop via that. And we don't need any of this stuff. But I can imagine that you don't want to do this uh, while you're writing your code and that you want to work via Spider or whatever. I mean, maybe not, then, then the Jupyter Notebooks would be fine. Um, yeah, I was hinting at that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I find doing easy things in Python fine with Jupyter Notebook. Uh, as soon as it gets a bit more involved, it becomes harder. Uh, what I definitely don't can do is uh, develop stuff in Slur, <laughs> uh, C++ compiler or whatever, uh, can't do that. So then I would need a desktop environment remotely. But, so anybody sees any problems with this or that what we should be providing extra that people don't have on their laptops? I think the only thing was that I was at RAL a couple of weeks ago and the Wi Fi there was really slow. I don't know if I was in a room or what it was. Eduardo, do you know? Is it uh, I could not hear you. Sorry, I was just saying that I was in, I was over by you guys a couple of weeks ago and the Wi Fi was really slow there. So um, I don't know if I was in a bad room or, or if I was on like a guest network or if there's a faster thing. <clears throat> I don't know where you were. It okay. might not. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But, but normally the internet is faster. It should be okay. Okay. I, I cannot yeah. uh, say it, it should be okay. Yeah. Um, I guess it will be impossible to have Ethernet connections. I mean, then IT will get crazy and whatever that. I would be very surprised if you can arrange that. Well, 
uh, we, we could create uh, a server with, I mean, you're right, you'll be very surprised if you could. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, how, how many people think they need remote computing facilities for what they want to from from people who are online? Nobody? Or we just can't hear anybody? I don't think I'll need it. Yeah. <laughs> because for you, David, Seth runs so well on your machine so that you don't need to go <laughs> anywhere else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what were you, you, hang on, you're having, did you say you're having an Azure? Or? Yeah. So that's not what you meant, is it, in, a moment ago? Well, yes, if, but if you have an Azure, do you need more than just Jupyter Notebooks? I would have thought so, but I'm not sure. No? I don't know how to think about what we're going to do. Um, yeah. Um, do you mean more than Jupyter Notebooks? You mean things like uh, um, remote desktop? Uh, yeah, something like that, yes. Um, yeah, I guess we would. Yeah. I think Ben said that was okay. I know he didn't want to do it for the PSMR, but of course, yeah. I thought he said it wasn't really a problem. For yeah, I. I so I, I think for people with a Mac and, and Linux, it, everything is fine, at least if they have on the Mac, if you have X Windows installed, but I guess most people do. Uh, if you don't, you should, but for on Windows, you would have to download an X server, which is not terrible, but uh, we can just recommend it, yes. I don't know if we can set up VNC easily on the on Azure client. That's something for Ben, I suppose. So maybe <clears throat> I've got a VC X S R V as a client X client on Windows. So you can write V C X S R V. It's uh, V C X. <clears throat> so it's VCX server basically. Ah, it's RV. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Type, 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 type the the one with without all the vowels because you will find it somehow. Right. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, Uh, right. Um, we'll, we'll, hey, it's Ashley here. Hey. Um, will we be only nine at the hackathon? Well, 11, I think, yeah. Uh, 11. Yeah. Would it help to have a, a list of what uh, operating system everyone is using just so that you know how many people really are using Windows, etc.? cetera? Oh, I've, uh, yeah, we can do. Um, I think we will have. All of them, more or less, <laughs> is going to be the answer. Uh, sadly. What do you use down under? <coughs> uh, Linux, I've got Ubuntu and Nixos. <laughs> right, yeah. So up here we use the, we are both by Microsoft, I think. We are property of Microsoft. Yeah. Um, okay, so I. <coughs> I'm guessing this is okay for the Azure side um, that we need this and and then can pre prepare a few machines so we, we can use them for just computation but 
I guess if you would do code development on the, on your laptop and then push it and then put it on the Azure client and then recompile and whatever, that's not going to be pleasant. So it's easier to do everything to do everything there if at all possible. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, right. So that was, I think what we needed for the practical issues. Um, on the software side, what we said, we would um, create forks of serve, serve, super built and stir. Uh, that we then protect the master branch of, but give everybody in the room uh, access to, uh, right access to other branches of. So that they can, we can all push into the same repository as opposed to having to do pull request flying around all the time. Uh, and we obviously don't want to do that with the uh, the normal repositories because those are the only touch via pull request. We don't want to give right access. <laughs> so the workflow would be. I fork, say, surf, right? And then I do my uh, brilliant coding. And then I create pull requests. No, I, I think if we, if we do pull requests there, and then it means, if, I mean, three or four people are going to work together. So then they would have to be sending pull requests <coughs> to each other and whatever. It's just going to be a pain. So. It's much easier if the four people are working from one repository. And therefore, uh, it is much easier if they have right access to something. And so, therefore, it's easier if we have one fork that has right access for everybody on in the hack. Okay. So, so okay, but uh, say a group finishes a brilliant uh, new feature then this new feature is merged into the master of their own uh, fork, right? And then we have to <coughs> create pull request from that fork to the master of <coughs> <coughs> to the master, right? Yeah. Uh, I thought you said there's just one fork for the whole of the hackathon. There is one fork for the whole of the hackathon. Yeah. No, it's, it's and uh, it's at the way. end of the hackathon, ideally, yes, we do pull requests. <laughs> to the uh, actual master, but uh, no, yeah, um, that can be a little bit later. Uh, this is proactive, James. I approve. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's quite a lot of background noise, which I don't think is related to the conversation. See, yeah, I I muted Casper. Um, oh, okay. Um, so I think. We, we should be uh, making it clear during the the hackathon exactly how it's going to how we want it to go no yeah sure of course i mean um, just at the moment i'm checking if if this was a proposal from last time if everybody's happy with that there are a few other people on the room i think it's a good way to do it but um then once we finish the hackathon presumably we'll have sort of half finished features Potentially in that forks master or in that forks other branches. Um, we'll how would be we on get the other those, branches? Yeah, on, on branches, but still in that fork. So how would we get those across into uh, the main fork? Well, they they will have to follow the normal process. They will have to obviously be finished. They will have to go through all the uh, uh, continuous integration testing and then a pull request and uh, accept it. Okay. So doing that and cleaning up that code to merge the pull request to the actual repository is probably not going to happen during the hackathon, I would think, sure. because it, that just takes time. Um, and so this idea of forking is to keep the surf tree cleaner? It means we can have people messing up stuff. 
we don't we, we don't want to give right permission to our uh, master repositories except to people who know what they're doing uh, and um, okay i mean maybe everybody in the hackathon will know what they're doing but Nevertheless. Or maybe known uh, no people in the hackathon. We know. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think you want to protect this a little bit. I mean, in principle, it's not necessary, but with Git, you can mess up things uh, if you're not careful. Um, no, but I was thinking if we would be using branches in the that would right. could be the same, but then we create many branches in the tree, so it, it gets a little bit messy. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. still then, you couldn't have uh, everyone pushing to the to the main repository. So I'm assuming what you're saying is one person from each group forks uh, and then gives access to everyone else in the group and you can, everyone gets right access to the one central, is that right? Well, so that, that's possible or we, we just, uh, I think it's easier if you just have one fork that everybody has right access to where everybody is working on. I mean, each group is working on a different branch then, yes? Or maybe sub-branches if they want to. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so basically, we would fork the the surface if super build and whatever else, uh, and everybody in the hackathon will do things on those forks. And after the hackathon, we merge things that are mature enough. Right. I, I think it's a, it's a relatively easy strategy. The only thing that I'm not 100% sure of is uh, the fork. Where does it sit? Uh, ideally, it would sit in CCP Petamar, but I guess that is a bit weird because then we have the official repository and the clone of the repository both in the same organization. I don't know if that works. The only thing is, maybe that with, with Sir, you can't push to UCL slash Sir, whether it's the master or another branch. No, sure. But you need to Sir, fork. You can. No, you can, but other people can. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 So could we create a new user or something like that? To... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's maybe a uh, Casper or if if uh, I don't unmute you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <Yes. laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't see any problem with just having a, for example, a diff slightly differently named repository as part of CCP Petamor like CCP Petamor slash uh, Surf Hackathon. Yeah. And we can just leave that live just for the day and then merge everything in into branches in the main repository. Yeah. And we're done with it. Or, um, I mean, honestly, what I would recommend is just creating a new team on CCP Petamore and adding people to it and giving them right permissions. Um, we'll still have master protected, so they won't be able to write to master, but we could allow them to create and write to new branches. So you, you're saying you would work from the normal repository anyway? Yeah, for, directly from the normal repository, um, add people in a collaboration team. Sure. You can do that in GitHub. So they only have permissions to create new branches or write to non-protected branches. Um, might also be an option. Yeah, I mean, it... it uh, it implies that uh, nobody is going to to do something crazy with Hub that messes up the history and that we need to... Sure. I mean, uh, what we can do to be really safe is in advance uh, clone the full thing ourselves, including all the branches. What if they didn't have right access to any of the previous branches? That way they always well, create this, new branches. This or hardly can protect any all of the current branches as well, yeah. I'm not sure if there are that many. Yeah, no, the, the, uh, there's probably very few branches that uh, should be on there, really, in all honesty. Uh, well, maybe a bit more on the store side, but, uh, you know, I, if, if, you, if you do squash merges and all of that stuff, 
I'm, I'm slightly reluctant to let people push this to Sure. The reason why I'm sort of reluctant to create a new repository is then um, if we, well, it would be nice if we could delete it if we're merging everything in, but then there's no record of where things came from. Sort of. Right. Uh, I don't know. It's that's true. Weird. Yeah. And if we do create a new repository, say like Surf um, Hackathon or something, are we going to leave it live forever? Yeah. Hosted by us always. With, with a fork, you can always move all the branches retrospectively over to the main one. So you've got the history yeah. um, and then not have the permission issues on the day. Yeah. I guess that's, yeah. Seems like a viable option. So we fork something, um, let people clone and push and whatever to the fork. And afterwards, move all of the branches over to the main repository and that will allow us to delete the fork and it will break everyone's links but all they need to do is set the url to be the main repository if they need to update. yeah yeah it, i mean i'm i'm slightly more comfortable with that solution okay um so i i don't know Eduardo, do you still have time to create those forks, or do we do that on the day? Or I mean, I mean, can you do it before the hackathon starts? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I guess just create a new repository in CCP Petamar and then add that as a remote and push it. Or we yeah. gonna do this under Eduardo's username or something? Yeah. That's that's how I would do it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't really push the fork button, uh, yeah. if you like. Yeah, you just push the same repository to to another another one. So I create a different remote. <clears throat> yeah, you you would do get remote add ccp petamor slash surf hackathon. Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. and then you push there. So, and which are the, the repositories that has to be have to be? Well, uh, at, at the moment, at the moment, I think it's just those three. Um, <clears throat> I don't. I, I hope we don't need to make changes to Gadgetron and ISMR and MRD. Um, but if we need to, I suppose we could create one at that point. And Stir, we, we do have UCL Stir and CCP Peta Master. Which one? Uh, you well, see it. Uh, yeah, we could, as far as I'm concerned, we could even get rid, op open up the CCP Peta Mars one and, and remove it later on. I mean, whatever. The, the, the CCP Peta Mars one is a fork, a uh, GitHub fork of the um, UCL one. UCL stair one, which is actually a fork of our private one, but you don't see that. Um, yeah, okay, let's just do the same. Let's let's take the UCL stir one and and push it to a stir hackathon. Then the naming at least is the same for all all three of them. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Um, so then we had our. Uh, Suggested topics and people. Oh, good. Uh, right. Did anybody have any comments on? I mean, we'll we'll check it on the day as well. But if if it just looked reasonable, the division of people that I suggested. Okay, so I suppose we can. I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to dictate this by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, that was just trying to divide us up in a way. Um, good. Um, so, um, what else? What else? Um, I have actually a question. So, is yes. Chris, um, what do you actually mean with implementing algorithms in Python? 
So th this one came, well, I, I meant reconstruction algorithms, sorry. Uh, this one came originally from Matthias, uh, Matthias Erhard, who's uh, from, he did his PhD over here, that then, then uh, now in Cambridge. He has uh, pet reconstruction algorithms that uh, use stochastic optimization, whatever it subsets. And he was asking, well, can I implement this in, in surf? And I said, well, probably. <laughs> uh, so that was one item. And the other item was um, the uh, CCPI has a number of algorithms for non-smooth optimization um, that would be useful for something like compressed sensing or so. And they have uh, funky priors. And so the idea was to say, can those algorithms, they are implemented in their library, can we implement and, or use those implementations uh, for surf optimization, or can we uh, potentially we have to copy them and modify it a little bit or whatever? Ideally not, but there you go. Um, so those it's uh, stuff like what's it called, Fista, and there is a few more, and there's also a few penalties in there that I think uh, well they are designed for. CT reconstruction, so they should be relevant for uh, MR reconstruction. Mm. Um, but do you mean to, to really implement them in Python or in, in the in C Python? Yes. Yeah. Well, basically, Christoph, the, the, the algorithm are already implemented. Uh, <clears throat> we can just plug in the, the data, say, we have. And you know we need to pass probably the <clears throat> uh, the projector, so forward and back projectors, and calculate. I think <clears throat> gradients or something like that. And that's it. Okay, I understand. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, um, I don't think that it, that's going to be it because <laughs> uh, the the amount of data is complex value than. And whatever they're doing in CT is not. Uh, your images are also a complex value. Uh, so your prior computation might not work on, on MR data. And, and so but the objective know. function will give you a real number, right? Sure. So the we need the proper algebra for for the, <clears throat> the calculation, but it doesn't quite matter if, if you have complex or non-complex, as long as when you calculate the, <clears throat> the objective function, you get a real number, I think. Yeah. Well, it will matter anyway. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see, I suppose, yeah. Um. I had a similar question, actually, about the adding geometry to the surf, um, what exactly that was. Yeah, so uh, we, we been discussing for a bit the um, at the moment our image objects don't have any information on where they are in the scanner in surf and that's obviously not good uh, and we uh, um, need to fix that and that means digging into ISM or MRD Gadgetron to find out where is that information, which David has been doing already a bit. And similarly, digging into STIR and possibly fixing some stuff in STIR to be able to expose that and then get that into STIR, a surf itself, and make sure that if we reconstruct data, that the uh, voxel location and size and all of that stuff and orientation is preserved and is okay and if we do that properly we should then be able to uh, put that into uh, Richard's surf reg code so that we can resample pet images into MR images and everything will be in the same place and whatever. Yeah, that makes sense. I got no idea how to do that. Hopefully uh, David has some tips on the, the two days. <laughs> I'm not sure how to actually put it into surf, but I think we're going to probably spend quite a bit of time trying to understand things. Yeah. 
Um, so actually that leads me on to the question about having test data. Um, yeah. So, so it'd be useful yeah. to have data acquired from scanners with different orientations. Yeah, exactly. So what um, what we are going to do here is, uh, I say we, I mean Ben and Marlena are going to, uh, and possibly Richard if if uh, he can manage, uh, going to scan the the spatial calibration phantom on our MMR in various orientations and also set the scanner to pretend that the patient is had whatever is supine feet first and and whatever orientation um, do both PET and MR scans so that we can see how does that change the data and are the reconstructions okay good so this will be phantom that's PET visible as well as MR is that correct uh, oh, sorry you disappeared this is a phantom that's both visible in PET and MR is that correct yeah, that is that is a, a, a phantom which is which has line sources in funky orientations and on the pet side and around it is oil so that you see them as holes in the in the MR. Okay. Do you know when they're going to do it? Um, um, there is an email flying around. I forward it to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. We have, we will have that data. Uh, we will, we also have the NEMA data, obviously that was used before. But although there is no, no really good MR associated with that. Uh, ben was going to see if we can, you know, do have a have a cylinder or whatever as well, just to have something simple. Um, we also have data from uh, Alak. From, from the GE scanner. I don't know if we will be able to get there because that obviously requires that the first item is being sold. Um, but that is also, also the data that she has also includes their spatial calibration phantom so that we would be able to check that. Now, I don't think we'll be able to reconstruct the MR data um, by the hackathon. It might be fun to try, but we would have to convert their P files to um, RMRD. that means you need to have orchestra and whatever, and I think that's a bit too ambitious to try and get that done by then. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think they said we could have it, but even though we're not, I mean, at UCL, even though we're not a GE site, but yeah. it's, a lot of, it's going to be a lot of work, I would think. It's going to be a lot of work, and, and I, I did have a look at the, uh, GE to ISM RMRD converter, and you you have to compile Gadgetron with the specific well with the, with the HDF5 libraries that GE supplies and whatever. And yeah, I, I don't think it's a trivial thing. Uh, but we will have the reconstructed images, the MR images in DICOM format, and and the PET images and so we can at least see yes our data aligns up with that yes or no I mean that even for the GE data and that, that's the the aim of all of that stuff yeah uh, it's uh, it's a bit challenging I think um, because it does require digging into Gadgetron which you've done and it, it does require fixing uh, something with that positions on stir, which I don't know if I've managed to do that before, possibly not. Uh, I mean, Richard is, is aware of that as well. Um, and then, yeah, all, getting all the orientations okay and, and, and making sure that we have that information into SIR, it's not easy. Not at all. No. But it, I mean, so th those those topics are sort of chosen to be a bit challenging. I, I, similarly, the GE data, sorting it all out on the day, is kind of hard. Uh, but it will be good to sit with a number of people together to try this because they, they, they're not going to be easy to understand what's going to come out and you need to discuss it. 
That's why we've chosen them. We are ambitious. That all makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Um, shall we have a look at the suggested timetable from um, Eduardo, which must be in the software meeting somewhere. Um, must be on this slide. Mm -hmm. Eduardo. Oh, well. Uh, it's the last one, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I think originally we we had said that we would start with discussion and projects whatever and then have lunch i see you have reorganized that but i think it probably makes sense because not everybody's going to arrive at the same time so we it will be informal discussions and then and then lunch i suppose is that how you thought to do it um I didn't remember that we had thought differently. So, yeah, I thought because I was not sure that everybody would show up at twelve. Yeah. Exactly. So I thought, okay, we just leave lunch in that in that period, and then we start basically. Yeah. So, so bit. if not if not that everybody arrives for at the same well at twelve, uh, I have no clue when the train starts. I have a meeting until about 10 here at UCL, it's going to be fun. Um, but um, so I, I, I suppose you have the room and we just go there, then when everybody's there, we go for lunch. Is that sort of the plan? Or? Yeah, well, lunch will be at the room. So. Oh, okay, okay. All right, great. So there is nothing to do, really, just sitting, chewing, right. okay. and typing. Um, <laughs> Okay. There will be some um, refreshments uh, at I think ten thirty for if somebody is already there, uh, like Evgeny and I <laughs> doing house cleaning and um, day one. Uh, so the thing is, if can you show the the map thing now? Right. So you see RAL reception is where you have to go. Uh, and there, there is the reception. So you have to go there and say, oh, I'm this and that. Uh, you are already registered, so they will give you a pass. Um, the room is where the Harwell campus red dot is. So it's basically outside of the campus, so you could so I, I left written a note for the, the people at the reception that you can call me on my mobile or uh, Evgeny's mobile. But <clears throat> in practice, you could just uh, go walking, cross the road. And it's just at the right corner of that building where Harwell Campus is written. Yeah, it's basically there. So there is an entrance uh, and the room is there. So I think we will be there. We will be breaching the law by keeping the door open or, or not. So you can knock, basically. Mm. Maybe I will put uh, a piece of paper saying uh, CCP Petema Hackathon so that you know that you can yeah. you can knock in and, and it's fine. So. I left this note to say we uh, to call us, but if you are there at some point and you can just walk, it's fine. Probably Evgeny and I will do like relay uh, back uh, back and forth. 
but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, do you want people to send you when they're going to arrive? That'd be easy. Yeah, that might help, yeah. yeah. Um, and potentially that also means if there are multiple people arriving roughly at the same time at the, at the train station, we could just get one taxi or something. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, it it doesn't take so by bus it would take I think a quarter of an hour or something like that. Yeah, well, that's that's fine. Yeah, maybe two, two, well, twenty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, and I guess bus information is on the website as well. Uh, maybe maybe it should go to Evgeny and you because you will be disappearing on holiday and he's back earlier. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, people should email you and Evgeny. Evgeny, yeah, yeah. Because you will only be back just before. Well, I'll be back one day after Evgeny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you're welcome to send us email saying we will we will arrive at this time. Maybe Slack would be better for that, so everyone can sort of plan taxis together and see. Oh, uh, sure. Sure. Um, yeah, it's a good idea. Hi, Balak. Hi. Um, So, yeah, okay. Any other, uh, oh, and for the people who don't know, the hotel is just above this, so it's all walking distance. Um, any other comments on any of this? I don't know, is the uh, tour decided? And... Uh, so I'm trying to get, uh, you into diamonds, right? but it, it's proving to be more complicated than than thought. So yeah. I've got a couple of leads, but uh, I, I'll see what I can do. I have to phone today. Yeah, great. Okay. Any uh, other comments from people? Good. Uh, all right. So, I suppose I'll. Yeah, do you still have time to put some of this on? Well, not not much, but to do announcements to to send it around, Eduardo, to for, for the Slack channel and so on for arrival. Um, on the website. Well, I guess you could just email it to whoever is registered. Or just to the developers group is fine as well. Um, and I'm sort of the, a bit on what we discussed now, what the plan is, whatever. Just I'm not sure what you want me to, to send. Well, uh, just for not everybody was on the phone, just that they information about laptops and whatever that they need to bring it. Oh, we probably need to tell them. Okay. Um, I think it would be uh, if they're going to work on their own laptop or on their uh, university remote system they would need to have the re most recent version of everything pre-installed and so on yes because otherwise um, it's going to be a disaster um, so they, they would they, and i guess we want to have them the use the developed tests of the uh, oh they would need to carry on the four from that right it would, they, it would, it, they need to change their remote response to arrive. Uh, 
that's a bit of a pain, right? Um, Shall I create a uh, virtual machine with the devil built? No, I wouldn't. I mean, unless uh, unless somebody says, "Yeah, I really, I, I, I cannot get this to work. I need, I need to run from the virtual machine, and I don't know how otherwise." But if the current virtual machine is set up that people can switch it. The people who are going to join will need to learn this stuff. Yes, if they if they can't switch to to devil build, then, uh, I think. I mean, maybe the instructions aren't clear, but that that can then be discussed on the on the mailing list as well. How to do it? Yeah. Um, so okay, so that sort of imply that we need to have those forks going soon so is that something you can still do today or not well for... I, I will add this remote yes i can do it okay so if you if you if you manage to do that today and you then tell people here is how you set up the super build to point to the relevant copies of the projects, uh, which is just setting the relevant URLs, yeah, uh, and that they need to build this in whatever environment they want to be working on. Mm -hmm. uh, we will also have the possibility to work via Azure. Uh, that'll be good. And then at some point when we have our data, we will make it available so that people can download it already on their machine if they want to use it uh, locally. Obviously, on the Azure client, it will all be there. But you don't have to email that yet because the data is not available yet. All right. It's a bit sketchy. Okay. Um, yeah. And then do I have to write something? So you send me this message, this document, and then I will send something. It is on the OneDrive in the hacker software. Right. The one that I sent you the link to before. Million times. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm happy to send it to you again, obviously. It's not no it's fine i mean as long as i know where it is so. yeah yeah uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and clean it up a little bit i just don't want to do it now because then everybody's waiting for me uh, yeah we're all fine great well uh, exciting times <clears throat> Since we are here talking yesterday, I took um, so from the working group, I think there was this discussion about making a survey about the operating system and platform that users would be interested uh, for in, for to run surf. Did you have a chance to look at that? I no, created the I saw you I saw the link. I, I can try and put it up now. Um, yeah, I guess are these yeah, you want. I check check boxes i think so right and, uh, similarly for that that i suppose um, i think for windows you want to allow the choice between home and uh, pro or enterprise i think pro or enterprise is essentially the same 
the difference is what they can do with Docker and package managers and all of that stuff. Um, no, so we, I didn't write anything about VM and Docker, in fact. Yeah. Okay. Something like this. And comments from other people, very welcome as well. I just saw a headline that Guido von Rossum has quit. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that as well. I haven't actually read the paper yet. Yeah. I don't know if that, uh, how important he still was for Python. Yeah. It says leaves behind no successor or governance. He's the benevolent di dictator. Yeah, I mean, that, he, that's always what Guido van Rossum was. Interesting. Um, There's quite a lot of people involved in setting up the standards and whatever, so I don't know if they have some kind of committee or not. I, I have no clue. Oh, wow. Python creator Guido van Rossum sys.exits as language overlord. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a position for you, Casper. <laughs> <laughs> New patriarch. Right. Yeah. Would suit you well. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I guess the question here doesn't quite work because you have C++ listed as well. Uh, well, there was uh, somebody interested in C++ bindings, do you remember? No, no, I know, but it's just the, the phrasing of the... Of the All right, yeah. Say language bindings or something. Yeah. Um, um, wait, do we need C++ language bindings? I thought everything was already in C++. Yeah, not everything, I don't think so. Um, uh -huh. And I think the C++ bindings are not necessarily um, as clean as the Python and MATLAB ones. Right. Because originally a, a lot of, I mean, the choice may be that we made was that to, to get the MATLAB and Python up rather quickly. And so we have any, did some, implemented some stuff on directly on the Python side. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. As well. I don't. I have no clue how much of that is still there. He's, he's slowly removing all of that, but I, I really don't know what the state is. Um, yeah. Is there? So maybe yeah. A question about uh, Docker and virtual machines and Conda and all of those things might be useful. That would be a different question. Sure. What type of question then it is? I guess that's also part of on what platform. Excuse me? It could be part of uh, the platform question. Yes. I, I, I don't understand. What did you say? Uh, as in the thing about um, having cloud infrastructures, Docker, or whatever, as part of the platform question. Right. The one on screen right now, yeah. I'm not actually sure which one of my microphones is the one that I'm speaking into. So, sorry if I'm a bit soft. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're in a in a cave together with all the people who need to be rescued. Awesome. <laughs> uh, current affairs. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, no, I suppose. I don't know, is, is Docker and Conda, and is that the same type of question as asking a high-end workstation versus cloud computing? Not really in my mind. I guess we could uh, allow multiple options. Sure. Yeah, sure. 
checkboxes rather than radio buttons. Yeah. But say, um, if you plan to use it on a cluster or on a cloud, it can be very different. You could install Conda on a laptop or Conda on a cluster as well. So it's, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. And, uh, yeah, to me, it's a, a sort of separate question. So they were a bit like the, the, the student. So I could add, let's say, cloud slash uh, Docker. Um, no, um, because Docker can run on your laptop, whatever. Um, so then, then maybe I can add a, a question, what type of distribution package you would be interested in? System. So. Yeah, I think that makes more sense to me. Yeah. So VM, Docker, or Conda, or Superbuild. Yeah. Or... Uh, Windows or Mac installation package, presumably. Should we um, should we ask a question about uh, profile if they would consider themselves as users or actually developers? Because I'm can imagine that the type of answers are going to be rather different. So the answer is yes, we should. Yeah. <laughs> um, Can you have questions that appear or disappear based on other answers? For example, yeah. you say which operating system do you have? And then beneath it, you say which Linux flavors which, I mean, should only really appear if the person says that they're going to use Linux, presumably. Yeah, there's some logic on that that could be added. Yeah. Um, do we want to ask them if they're interested in PET or AMR or PET AMR? <laughs> this is an, a, di a different type of uh, questionnaire. Do you know us? Uh, yeah, sure. I could add that anyway. Yeah, we don't want to ask too many questions, obviously. But uh, I, I, I think it might be, might be useful. Um, okay. What else? Sorry, I just missed. Um, what's this question for? Who is it for? I would be sent out to the whole world. Okay. <clears throat> um, as part of finding out who are we actually targeting. This is suggested by Stephen. And also a little bit part of uh, marketing. Uh, we have this stuff. We would obviously have to send it out with some description of what, uh, what you already have and point people to relevant places and whatever. And then say, here is a questionnaire that we want to see for future directions. Um, yeah, so basically you have to rewrite these two lines at the top. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put it incredibly high on my priority list, uh, unfortunately. But I can, can discuss on it when you're back from your holiday. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's great. Um, oh, is, are there any features or pull requests and all of that stuff that we need to try and merge um, before the hackathon. Uh, 
obviously there is stuff from Palak on the GE side. Uh, is there anything on SERP? Well, are there... Um, well, the PLS prior, I guess it's not really essential, but it would be nice to merge it at some but, uh, point. I forget where that is. It can be already done. So this must have been... Yeah, my PLS prior I did before that, which is the same, the same thing. I should that thing should be fine. Yeah, if, if you have a look at it. Sure. Um, super built. Um, I don't know if this, this maybe can just be accepted. I, I have no clue. Me neither. Yeah. Um, and Conda side, is that something? Well, that's not really essential for them, I suppose. No, the Conda side uh, works as long as we create one single enormous surf package which contains boost uh, gadgetron and all the rest uh, what i've been trying to do at some point was to make it like uh, i want to install gadgetron alone so you install gadgetron and all these the dependencies and then and and so forth but uh, i came to a problem that yeah stir i missed something for stir to compile surf and and I can't compile ACE with Conda. Actually, Casper, if you have five minutes, I need to ask, pick your brain because. Yeah, sure. Um, also, yeah, the way you had done it before with the one massive package, um, would that Boost version, for example, conflict if somebody had also installed Boost themselves before? Yeah, I presume. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I was trying to. Well, actually, the boost thing we can separate it. Sure, that, yeah. that works. Yeah. Though what doesn't work is uh, well, there are some things I cannot m make up. So I could make a CMake for the ACE. It does work. It compiles, and when I create the Conda recipe, it just doesn't finish for some reasons. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, we can take a look at that. I guess. Yeah, so the, the stir thing needs needs a fix there, um, which uh, I, I don't know if I managed to do that. I mean, if anybody wants to uh, create a pull request for that, uh, Ashley, you, you had a look at it as well. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's not entirely trivial to do it because it needs some CMake trickery. Otherwise, I mean, the concept is quite easy, but uh, I, I don't know if I can manage to do that. But I, I don't think we need all of this before the hackathon, so that's it. So we're sort of okay. Um, the there were okay. There there was the thing with the Python packages, Casper which was a pull request that you abandoned because it broke stuff. Um, yeah, so, I can't remember, honestly. No, no, it's, uh, it's a while ago now. <laughs> Is it still open somewhere? <laughs> well, it's, yeah, you, you, it was merged and then retracted or, or uh, yeah, I think so. Um, ah. Because this was just before the release and we, we had problems then. That's about what I remember from it. Cool. Uh, was it super build or just surf? Or... It was the super build? Okay. Yeah, can't remember which one of the two it was. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll try and find it somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
So the bye, Christoph. Oh, Johannes. Right. Am I? Um, the Nifty Reg is maybe more of an issue, but that I think Richard and I would need to discuss. Uh, you would want to talk about. Well, it would be for the geometry things. It would be very, very useful. Okay. Sure. Uh, the issue is the integration of the images and so on, because clearly all all stuff that we do on adding uh, orientation and whatever to uh, surf image data is stuff that you need. Uh, but then we then need to be able to use your things so that you know either independently or whatever so that's something that i think we need to discuss how we make that happen sure. um, there is one other thing which is uh, giving me a little bit of a headache uh, the algorithm that matthias wants to implement uses uh, subsets for pets um, we haven't really exposed that yet in surf and um, we had a strategy to do that um, and then you said well this is too much work now let's move it to uh, milestone version 2 but now uh, we might have to move it up earlier but he's on holiday so <laughs> um, gives me a bit of a worry um, but we can't resolve that one now. Um, I guess maybe Palak, are you still there? Yes. Okay, so on um, your pull request on the stir side. Yeah. Um, what are we doing with that? Is this is this something that you feel we should merge? now or should we just finish it uh, i think yeah, i think uh we should wait to finish this at hackathon and then it can it will be ready to merge right uh in in that case this will be a, a somewhat non-standard thing then because obviously this re relies on your fork uh, yes. So that means that you will probably have to give write access to your to your fork uh, during the hackathon, or we put uh, or we push the branch somewhere else. I mean, that we can do as well, but right. we can do that over there. That doesn't really need that. All right. Discussing it now. You you could still do the same thing if you've got a, a separate fork. Just have this branch on that fork as well. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we pull it from from this one and then work on the branch. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Great. Well, thank you all for joining. Uh, I'll again. I'll try and clean up that file a little bit and send it to Eduardo to do the rest of the cleaning. And then uh, you will get some more messages. Um, so for those who are not yet on the Slack channel, uh, you can already join if, uh, don't, if you don't know how. Uh, then ask or Eduardo will put it in his email, I'm sure. All right. Thank you. And do I have to invite people in that thing? I have no clue. All right, <laughs> I, can, I can rise something to join. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye. bye.